Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mohab Zlam. We resume our course. Now we are in the fifth step, in the step five. We did the first point in this step, where we broke down our controller into smaller transfer functions. And we have written our controller as a function of z power negative one. Now for the second point in this step, in the final step. In fact, we will write an equation for each block, for each small transfer function, okay? As we already said, we will consider our controller as a function of z power negative 1. So we can put here our controller as a function of z power negative 1. Okay, this is our controller. In fact, our controller is a transfer function. But between what and what? In fact, our controller, which is a transfer function, is between the control input u and the error. So our controller, which is a transfer function, is between the control input, which is a digital signal, and the error, which is a digital signal. So the input for our controller, for our transfer function, is the error, and the output for our transfer function is the control input u, okay? Now for this factored form, how to write an equation for each block? Already we can put this gain in this block. Okay, now how to do? In fact, we can propose this method, this trick. In fact, we will create intermediate variables. As you see here, u1, u2, until u in p. As you observe, this block, this small transfer function correspond to u over u1. And this block correspond to u1 over u2. And this block correspond to u2 over u3 until this block where this block correspond to u and b over error as you can observe here the simplified product is u over error why because we have here common factors which can be cancelled out okay we have here this common factor u1 which can be cancelled out and we have this common factor u2 which can be cancelled out and so on so the simplified product is u over Error. Okay, now with block diagram, it can be easier to understand. With this block diagram, we can start with this block. Why? Because the information that we have from the start is the error. From the error and with this block, we can obtain u in b. This block, as you see here, it's equal to u in b over the error. u in b over the error. And we continue. We suppose here we have several blocks. As you see here from u3, in considering this block, we can obtain u2, okay? And for this block from u2, we can obtain u1. This block, which is equal to u1 over u2, until the control input u. We can consider a little example to understand better, where we have some plugs. We have this plug and this plug and this plug and this plug. Now for this plug we have u over u1 and for this plug we have u1 over u2. For this plug we have u2 over u3 and for this plug we have u3 over error. As you see here we have three intermediate variables u1, u2 and u3. Okay, now with our block diagram, we will start with this block, with the last block, okay? Then we put this block, then we put this block, then we put this block, okay? As you see here for this block, we have u3 over the error. We start with the error because the information that we have from the start is error, okay? So with this block, we can obtain u3 and for this block, we can obtain u3. 2 from u3 and for this plug we can obtain u1 from u2 and finally we can obtain our control input u from u1 in considering this plug this plug which is equal to u over u1 okay as you see here with our method we will obtain our control input u from the error but with intermediate variables okay now we propose a numerical example as you see here we have here three plugs Okay, now we consider our block diagram. So we start with this block, then we put this block, then we put this block. The input of our block diagram is the error, and the output is the control input u. Then we put our intermediate variables. We put here u1, then we put here u2. As you see here, with block diagram, it's easier. We put our blocks, 
then we put the error here and the control input here then we put here intermediate variables okay now we will write an equation for each block we start with this block why because the information that we have from the start is the error now we have this plug which is equal to u2 over error now with a cross product we can write our recurrence equation here as we work in discrete time so t is equal to k times ts where ts is the simple time okay if you remember correctly in the first video for this course we have chosen the symbol te for our simple time now for this video i have chosen ts as a symbol for our symbol time anyway you can choose the symbol you want okay okay so the time t is equal to k times ts where k can take 0 1 2 etc okay now we have this recurrence equation for this plug we have here u2 at the current time t we have here u2 at the time t minus ts why because u2 times z power negative 1 that gives the variable at the time t minus ts the same for the error okay now for this plug which is equal to u1 over u2 and with a cross product we can obtain the corresponding recurrence equation just a little comment we have here u1 at that time t minus 2 times ts why because u1 times z power negative 2 that gives the variable at the time t minus 2 times ts okay then we write the recurrence equation for this plug as we did before okay as you see we write the recurrence equations in order we start with this plug then with this plug and so on okay now as you see here we obtain the recurrence equations that allow to obtain the control input u from the error okay if you remember in the first video we said that we have to translate our controller to recurrence equations and that is what we did now we obtained our recurrence equations that allow to obtain the control input u from the error okay i can put our microcontroller aside apart here as you see here we have our recurrence equations to apply in the microcontroller we obtain the control input u from the error where the error is the information that we have from the start now how to obtain the error error is equal to reference minus y we have the values for the reference and the output y okay all these variables have digital values why because we have here an analog digital converter where we have here digital values for the reference and we have here digital values for the output y okay now we have here these mathematical equations to apply in the microcontroller imagine here we have an infinite loop where for each simple time we will apply these recurrence equations in order to calculate our control input u where our control input u is a digital signal that's why we have here a digital analog converter uh, in order to convert this digital signal to an analog signal in order to apply to the actuator okay so for each simple time we will calculate our control input u then we will send this value to the actuator okay as we already said in the arduino card we haven't this converter so how to do in fact we will consider this signal pwm where for each value of the control input u we will send a signal pwm where the duty cycle of this signal allowed to send an average value which is equal to this value imagine that the control input u is equal to 3 so the signal pwm will have a duty cycle which allows to send an average value which is equal to 3 okay i leave here a little space to explain the rest we have here the essential intermediate variables u1 and u2 now for these recurrence equations we have created automatically other intermediate variables such as this variable u2 at the time t minus ts and such as this variable and this variable etc okay and as we already said that for each sample time we will calculate we will apply these essential recurrence equations in order to calculate the control input u from the error okay now for the next time we will apply again these recurrence equations but for example we have to know the value for this variable error at the time t minus ts at the previous time so we have to add this equation 
That means that put the value of the error at the current time in the variable at the previous time in order to be used in the next time, okay? And for this variable, we write this equation and we have here these two variables u1 at the time t minus ts and uh, the variable u1 at the time t minus 2 ts for these two variables we write these two equations that means put the value of the variable u1 at the time t minus ts in the variable u1 at the time t minus 2 ts and put the value of the variable u1 at the time t in the variable u1 at the time t minus ts. Be careful not to reverse these two equations, okay? Why? Because in this case, you put the value u1 at the time t in this variable, then this variable, which is equal to this value, you put it in this variable. So these two variables have the same values, okay? If this is not correct. So be careful not to reverse these two equations. Now for this variable, we write this equation. That means put the value of u at the time t in the variable u at the time t minus t s. Okay? Just we note that uh, the recurrence equations that you see here are just uh, mathematical equations. This is not a code to be applied. Okay? Now I will show you the strategy I proposed to write our code in Arduino card where the strategy allowed to calculate our control input u for each simple time. Okay, I explain. We start to define a variable in time which is equal to our simple time where for our example the simple time is equal to 10,000 microsecond which is equal to 10 millisecond. Okay, now we have this function which gives the time in microsecond the time from the start of operation okay so for the time zero from the start this function will give the value zero okay now we have here this infinite loop imagine we are now at the time zero okay now i ask the question is in time is less than the current time why the current time because this function gives the current time in microsecond as you see here this condition is not verified because in time is higher than this value okay so i do nothing here so i will not apply our recurrence equations okay imagine here we have zero for our control input at the time zero now we continue imagine here we are at the time thousand microsecond the condition is not always verified and we do nothing here okay so we have always this value zero in this period in this simple time okay imagine we have arrived at this current time now our condition is verified in time is less than this value so we can apply our recurrence equations in order to calculate our control input u at the time ts okay and at the same time we'll add the value of our sample time to this variable in time now for the next microsecond in time is equal to 20,000 microsecond okay now for this current time our condition is not verified so we do nothing here so we keep the same value in this period we continue and we keep that same value during this simple time okay we continue imagine now we have arrived at this current time now our condition is verified so we apply our recurrence equations so we calculate our control input u at this time to ts okay and at the same time we'll add the value of our sample time to this variable in time so for the next microsecond in time is equal to 30,000 microsecond so now our condition is not verified so we do nothing here so we keep the same value of our control u during this period okay and so on this is the strategy I proposed in order to calculate our control input u for each simple time and to keep the same value in each simple time, okay? Okay, this is the strategy I proposed, but you can choose the strategy you want, okay? Now I show you here our code for Arduino card. As you see here, we have our infinite loop in which we put our recurrence equations, okay? And you can see here our condition that I explained before. We initialize here our variables. Just a little note, as you see, uh, we have here underscore one and we have here underscore two. What does it mean that? If I take this variable, in fact, this is the variable u one at the time 
t minus ts and for this variable we have the variable u1 at the time t minus 2 times ts okay and so on as you see here we have this variable which is the variable u at the previous time at the time t minus ts in fact we choose this variable in order to initialize our control input now why do we choose this variable in order to initialize our control input in fact this variable is used in this equation imagine we are at the time ts so we have to know the value of the control input at the previous time we are here at the time ts so the previous time is zero because ts minus ts is equal to zero that's why we initialize our control input in considering this variable okay as you see here we initialized our control input to zero okay you can choose another value if you want okay okay now just some comments uh, about our code we use this function in order to read y as integer values then we convert these integer values into voltage values from 0 to 5 volt 5 volt is the operating voltage for our Arduino card okay the same for our reference okay then we saturate our control input u because the control input u don't have to exceed the operating voltage and must not be less than zero then we send our control input u as pwm signal as integer values from zero to 255 okay okay this is our code for arduino card okay as i already said you can choose your method in order to write your code okay the most important for me is to understand how to obtain the recurrence equations okay then it's up to you to choose your method to write your code okay this is the final video for our course okay wait me for other subjects and don't forget to subscribe to my channel Thank you for your watching. Goodbye.